Hey there, it's Diane Forrester, and welcome to I Have Today, the show that inspires, educates, and empowers you through life's transitions. And each week on this show, I bring on the coolest, most amazing, awesome experts, authors, CEOs, entrepreneurs, and truly life changers who have gone through their own transitions and reinventions in life and have come out on the other side successful. And they come on this show to share their stories and expertise with us. And today, I am excited to have a very special guest today, a one-of-a-kind man, Guinness Book World Record holder, Howard Byrd. Hey, Howard, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about Howard, because Howard Stevenberg is recognized as the world's fastest reader. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to read his bio, but before I do, I want to share with you what this week's theme of the show is and our intention statement. So the theme this week is the benefits of learning to speed read and what that could do for your life. Can you imagine being able to read a book, you know, in, you know, a few minutes versus a few days? Could you imagine your ability to retain knowledge and information? Can you imagine what it would be like to, to have a memory where you really recall everything? Because I know personally for me, that's a challenge for me. I have a problem remembering things. And I, I have stacks and stacks of books that I would love to read and get through, but it's, it's a time thing. So we're going to talk a lot about that today. And we're, um, Howard's got so much knowledge. We're going to talk about the value of knowledge management. So, but the theme is the benefits of learning to speed read. Okay, now our intention statement for this week, if you're writing it down, let it anchor in, it is this. I have today to leverage my learning process and knowledge. Okay, so we all know knowledge is power. So this is gonna be a really powerful show. All right, so let me read Howard's bio for you so you can understand the depth and breadth of this man's work. It is amazing. Howard Steven Berg is recognized as the world's fastest reader thanks to the cutting edge accelerated learning techniques he developed that turned information overload into information assets. Respected internationally for his contribution to the learning process, he is listed in the 1990 Guinness Book of World Records for re reading more than 25,000 words a minute and writing more than 100 words a minute. So amazing. I love it. Howard uses his talents to train you on how to stay on top of the information your success depends on. Howard is a graduate of SUNY Bingington, where he majored in biology and then completed a four-year psychology program in one year. His graduate studies at several New York City colleges focuses on the psychology of reading. Howard has appeared on over 1,100 radio and television programs, including Neil Cavuto, did I say that correct? I hope so, John Stewart, and Live with Regis. His brain-based learning strategies have been hailed as a major breakthrough in publications like Forbes FYI, Selling, Men's Health, Red Book, and Bottom Line Magazine, and have been featured in dozens of newspaper interviews throughout North America. Howard has created more than 14 other accelerated learning programs, including Speed, Math, and Memory. Berg's Time Warner book, Super Reading Secrets, is in its 28th reprint, and Barron Speed Reading grossed over $65 million and established him as a leader in brain-based learning. He is mentioned in a number of books as a leading expert on brain-based learning and has been honored by over nine books that track outstanding professional performance including Who's Who Among Emerging Leaders and 2,000 Notable American Men. Oh, my God, Howard. <laughs> so excited to have you here. Welcome you. to the show. Wow, wow, wow. Well, fun. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's have fun. All right, so I, <laughs> my, our first question is, I mean, how did you get started doing this? That's part of the story you were asking if people overcame something. I told you I grew up in Brooklyn. I grew up in East New York, a very bad place to grow up. I was in the projects. There were lots of gangs. And I mean, I was mugged over a hundred times. I had knives to my throat. I was beaten with bats. 
My dad was pistol whipped. It wasn't a great place to grow up. But there was one safe place, the library. Gang kids would rather be dead than caught in the library. It's like, it's like vampires in churches. They don't go there. So I read. I read a lot because that's what I could do. And I had college reading when I was 11. And when I went to college at 17 to major in biology, in my junior year, I was interested in how the brain works. So I wanted to be a psychobiologist, not a psychotic, but a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I told the dean, I want to do the bio. The psych major he says, you're a second term junior. You haven't had any courses. You have to do the whole four-year program in one year and finish bio. And frankly, you're not smart enough. And that's when it hit me. They don't teach us learning in school or work. They tell you what to learn and why to learn, but not why you hear a song once and you sing it your whole life and you read the seven habits of highly effective people. Next day, you don't know any habits. So I started learning the brain, got up to 80 pages a minute by using what I learned. I finished the program in one year. I took the GRE in biology, which is like the SAT for graduate school. And in three nights, I went through 48 books like genetics, biochemistry, cell physiology, I got three questions wrong. So I was in the 99th percentile in the world. And then I wondered, was it just me or could it be taught? And I started a school, we taught kids 11 to 15 the system. They did a 30 chapter book in lifelong developmental psych in one week. That's a sophomore course. Wow. And 15 out of 18 passed the clap for credit in a week. I said, now, now I can help make a difference. So I'm, I just trained the Green Berets, and I just trained the Royal Thai Army. I, I go all over the world doing this. And I help companies and businesses handle a knowledge overload. And I help young people finish school. And old people stay mentally fit. So that's what I've been doing. And that that's brings us up to today. That is amazing. What an amazing story. And what a blessing that you had the library to turn to, at, at, you know, and what it did for you, you know, and I, I, I'm very into, you know, energy and the universe and spirit and all that. And I feel like you, you're so special. I mean, we all are special, but you're so special that the universe was, was creating this ener this environment over here and literally forced you this way and wham, look what happened. So uh, it's amazing. You're right. After, after, after college, I, I studied, I became a yogi. I studied the seven schools. I was a Kundalini yogi, and I studied all the different schools of yoga and meditated, which opened me up. I, I learned Kabbalah, and I started studying symbols because I realized that the key to the unconscious is in symbols, like tarot and astrology. I was interested in how they relate to the unconscious brain to build to intuitiveness. Yes. And, uh, that's how I developed my ability between what I learned in science and my willingness to open my mind up to things that a lot of people would think was silly. Uh, I got up to 80 pages a minute. I don't think it's silly anymore. <laughs> it's amazing. And think about what you, what you know. You know, your knowledge base is amazing, incredible right? You're the fastest reader in the world. You are probably the, the smartest person in the world too, in many, many ways, right? <laughs> I, I always tell people a little knowledge makes you arrogant, but the more I learn, the more I realize there is left. Yeah. Still learn. It's humbling. Yeah. You go in a library and you see hundreds of thousands of books and you realize that's just what we know. And right. millions upon millions upon millions of times more we haven't even found yet. And yeah. so I think it humbles you when you realize just how much there is. And that's why I, I like looking at other experts. When I don't know something, I find someone who does that I can leverage. So I don't have to know everything, but know the right people. Right, right. That is fantastic. Okay. So um, what... How does knowledge manage, management affect a business's bottom line or, or anyone really in general? Let's talk about knowledge management. Information doubles every six months. The average person reads about 200 words a minute. And okay. so people feel overwhelmed. They have to learn laws, rules, regulations, um, things you have to compl compliance issues. And they have to not just learn it, but remember it. You have to stay on top of the changes in your industry, the technology changes. You have to know how to stay on top of business skills like communicating and writing and 
copywriting and marketing and then all the other things it takes to run a business. All, and you have to stay on top of current events. All that time, and some businesses have to stay licensed, like doctors and attorneys. They have to continually take credits. The time you spend learning what you need to know is uncompensated. Yes. If you cut that time in half, remember it better. You'll make better decisions. You'll make fewer mistakes. You'll make more money. And ultimately, you'll have more time, depending on your, your preference, more time for your family and more time for your business. It's the, up to the individual what they do with the time. But time is the one commodity where you'll get 24 hours a day. And the difference between a Bezos and the Gates and us is they use their time better. You yes. don't get the same time. I, I agree. Why do you think we read so slowly? I actually know why. Why? Imagine you're driving in a car at 70 miles an hour. You're reading the road, front, back, left, right. You're reading the gauges. You're watching the, you're listening to the radio. You're talking on the phone. Your friends are in the car. You're chatting and you're bored. Yes. You read a book at about 200 words a minute and you barely remember 10% the next day. Why? In the car, everything's a movie. It's visual. You're taking mm -hmm. in images and storing them. In a book, it's like someone's in the back of your head talking one word at a time. You're listening with your eyes. And I found a way to teach people in a very short amount of time how to see information more like a movie in a book and less like a conversation, which immediately doubles or quadru to quadruples their reading speed with good comprehension. And I'll actually show them how to do it today. Yes, this is going to be exciting. I can't wait. Uh, all right, another question. So why do speed readers use their hands? That's how we speed up. And if you'd like, I could actually demonstrate how it works. And I'd show love it. How to do it. I'd love it. When you're reading, a lot of times you stop because something is interesting or you read it again. And it, it didn't change. You're wasting time. You don't have a lot of time. If you keep reading what you read, you'll never get to what you need to know and don't know yet. So what we do, go to a book you've read, preferably nonfiction. Read it for a minute. The reason I want a book you've read, you already know what's in it. The only reason you're confused is you're going too fast. So when you get confused, you know you went too fast because you know the book already. Okay. Read for one minute with a timer at your normal speed. Don't do anything special. See how far you get. When the ringer goes off, take a pen or a pencil and mark off where you got to. So now you know, that's how far you read now. Now you're ready to learn how to read faster? Yes. Go to the second chapter. Take your hand and go one line at a time with your eye following your hand as fast as you could comprehend. As long as you know what you're reading, speed up till you don't. You know, that's where it got too quick. Then slow down just enough that your comprehension comes back. For five minutes, one line at a time, eyes following your hand, as fast as you can understand. Then go back to the first chapter. Time yourself again for a minute where you were originally. Use your hand this time, and you'll go 20 to 40% further with good comprehension just doing that one change. Wow. Okay. All right. If you're listening out there, um, that's what you need to do. I'm going to do it. Because this is, this is something that um, I'm very interested in doing, too. Like I said, I have, you know, so many books that I want to read. And you're right. Teach you know, your kids this, too. Teach it to your kids. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, what a difference it's going to make in their lives, right? The younger you are when you learn this, I mean, the, the growth and, and, uh, is exponential. That's, yes. I love it. All right. And an 84-year-old read three books in three hours. So you could be older too, but I had eight-year-olds reading in five seconds a page. So imagine you're eight years old and you could read five seconds a page and retain it. What would your life be like by the time you hit 70? Yeah. So, um, oh my gosh, I have so many questions. So I, I want to know, um, oh my God, you have here, what are the three levels of learning and how can learning help me increase my productivity? The three levels of learning. What are the three they? levels of learning are literal, implied, and inferential. And literal is what you see. Implied is what you're supposed to figure out on your own 
like I said, a woman wore a red dress. You're supposed to know what a dress is and what a woman is and what red is. If I had to explain every word, I couldn't write anything. Inferential is getting the deeper meaning. Would you like to see how to apply this to, to genius to see how this would work? Yes, I would love it. I'd like our listeners and you, if you can, get a piece of paper and just draw a circle and put a point in the middle. And if you can't draw it, picture a, a circle with a point in the middle. Okay. Now look at it and what do you see? Just literally what's there? I, I'm looking at the dot. The point. And the circle, right. How interesting is it? Not very. <laughs> no, that's, that's literal learning. You're looking at what's there. You're not really getting the significance of it. This is actually the meaning of life, by the way, what you're looking at right now. But I'll go to that next. The second level was implied. This isn't just a circle with a dot. It's a symbol. It's a symbol in astrology of the sun and in astronomy because they were the same discipline back in the days when it evolved. So this is the symbol of the sun. Is that a little more interesting than it's a circle with a dot in the middle? Yes, it is. But not a whole lot more. <laughs> now I'm going to tell you that it's the meaning of life. Would you like to see the highest level of learning is inferential? This is how they used to teach. Like Buddha would teach. The, he'd hold up a flower and say, this is love. And then they'd say, what do you think it means? So I'm going to show you the meaning of life from just that circle and a point. Okay. A point is infinitesimally small. There's an infinite number of points where you are, but you can't see any of them. They're invisible. Just like God, it's everywhere. You can't see it anywhere. So this point is the symbol of God, spirit. It fills everything, and nowhere where you look can you see it. It's mm. everywhere and invisible at the same time. Yes. Circle is a boundary. Inside is the self, and outside is everything that isn't you. So what's it saying? Inside of everything is this one thing, spirit. Everything is one thing that looks different, seems different, appears different, but at the root, we're all one thing. Yeah. So brotherhood isn't just a euphemism, we're actually one thing. And so this is the symbol of the meaning of life. Everything is connected, everything is one thing. It looks different, it has a circle, it has a boundary, it seems separate, but in reality, at the center, even though you can't see it, Everything is the same. That's what it means. Now, is that more interesting than it's a circle with a point in the middle? Far more interesting. And I love that. Love oh. that so much. Yes. So you see the difference in the level of intellect. Now, imagine you're in business and you're able to look at a problem at that level. Not just see the problem, but see how the problem's bigger imp implications are and how to resolve and solve it. That's, that's what that's about. Mm. This is so good. Howard, this is so good. Thank All right. You. What uh, are the five things you must learn to master this material? Many times people will say, I got a big book. I don't know what to learn. I'm overwhelmed. Yes. I'm sure that, that happened. But I have to learn it. What do I look for? Just five things. And I'll tell you what they are. And I'll show you how the brain does this right afterwards. Okay. The first, first thing you want to look for is vocabulary. 80, 85% of a new topic is learning words. What words? They're bolded. They're italic. They don't look the same. The writer's saying, look at this word. It's different. I want you to see it because it's different. That's the word you need to know and understand. First step. Second, names. Who's in your book and what did they do? Third, any number date statistical formula, how it's used or what its significance is. Fourth, in most nonfiction books, there's headers and subheaders that separate sections. What are the five main concepts in each section? The five big takeaways. And last, any questions and answers. In a textbook, they usually at the end, I read them first. I want to know what I need to know when I'm done. So when I see it, I know I need to know it. So I prioritize it, not get to the end and say, I don't know this and go look for it again. If I know what I'm looking for, I find it. So if you know every word and what it means, every person and what they did, every number, date, and statistic, the main ideas in every section and the answers to the questions, what else would you need to know? Right. That is, so, that is so great. I love that. 
Would you like an experiment that shows how the brain does that? Yes. Look around you at everything colored blue and memorize it. Everything you see in your, and everyone else, watch for everything blue. Memorize it, memorize it, make a picture, close your eyes, and remember everything you just looked at red. You can open your eyes. Your brain said, wait a minute, you said blue. And blue things got bigger and brighter and louder, and red and everything else disappeared. When you have a purpose, when you're looking for these five things, they pop just like blue did off the page by your brain. The brain amplifies what it's looking for. And you can use that power to read quicker with better understanding. Mm. That's so fantastic. You're right. They do pop. And it's also, you know, the, the brain does that, and right? And so it's the, the, you know, reticular activating system. Like, it's like if you, you know, desire something. Right. right. You desire something. Say you desire the red car, uh, the red Corvette. All of a sudden, you see red Corvettes everywhere. So if you're doing that and setting that up at the beginning, you are going to retain and you are going to get what you need out of the book. Fantastic. I didn't mention the reticular activating system. I didn't know how deep you wanted to go, but that is, <laughs> you're correct. That is what's happening. You are activating it. Correct. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. I love it. Um, uh, what role does your emotional intelligence or EQ play in the success of this? Imagine I'm training you to drive. I'm a driving instructor. Mm -hmm. say, you're ready. Go take your test. And you come back and say, I failed. I said, how could you fail? You know how to drive. I got nervous. It was a test. Has, has you ever seen someone get nervous? They couldn't remember anything or how to speak in public and they got tongue-tied? That's emotional intelligence. I would like to show you how to create a state, an emotional state. Okay. So Stand up for this one thing. I'm going to have to sit because I'm in a laptop. But if you stand up, I'll show you how to do it. I'm going to show you to wake up on demand. So if you're okay. going to a long, boring meeting, or you could stay seated, but I'd like our audience to stand. You probably will, if you stand, it'll ruin your, your mic and everything. So, stay yeah. where you so the left side of the brain controls which part of your body? The right side. And the right side controls which part? The left side. Perfect. Take your left hand, touch your right shoulder. Do it. Left okay. hand to your right shoulder. Do it. Mm -hmm. Take your right hand and touch your left shoulder. Alternating like the Macarena without music. <laughs> left to right, right to left. Perfect. Left to right. Keep going. Keep moving. Left to right, right to left. Perfect. Now we're going to do the same thing, but to our opposite knee. Left to right, right to left. To the knees. Leap, go to the knees, left to right, like a Charleston, left to right, right to left. Perfect. Raise your right hand, squeeze your thumb tightly. And say this like you mean it. I feel great. I feel and great. Yes, as you pull your hand down. Yes. Yes. Perfect. We're going to do three sets of these. When you're done, I'm going to show you uses to wake up when you're in a meeting taking an exam, driving in traffic. Whenever you start to have your energy drop, you can wake up. Are you ready? Ready. Go at my speed. First, we're going to do the shoulder taps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Knees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How do you feel? I feel great. I feel great. Yes. Now a little faster. Same thing. Shoulders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Knees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How do you feel? Great. I feel great. Yes. As fast as you can now. Shoulders. As fast as you can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Knees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How do you feel? I feel I great. Feel great. Yes. Now, yes. what happens when you do this three times? You change your no state. Nothing. <laughs> Would you like something? I guess I can show you how to make it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. We know from 
Pavlov, you ring a bell, you fed a dog, you ring a bell, you feed a dog, you ring a bell. Eventually, the dog will drool. You don't want to drool. This yeah. I feel great, yes, is your bell. The latest studies show habits take 90 days to create. Yes. So if you go slow, medium, fast, shoulders and legs, every day, 90 days, now you're in an important meeting. You don't want to start tapping your shoulders. It's going to look really strange. Yes. So you can grab your thumb and say to yourself, I feel great, yes. And you'll feel just like you just did, more awake. Because you stimulated the left, the right, both, and went quicker and quicker. And the energy you built up is now anchored to this, I feel great, yes. The important thing is you have to feel great when you do that, or you're not anchoring anything. There's nothing to anchor. So you have to actually feel great. And then the same way you can learn to relax, to focus, and be creative, you can create states. You talked about business. What are you doing to teach people to get in the state they need to be in to use what you're telling them? And what state do they need to be away from? So if I taught you not just to drive, but to relax during the test, how many more of my students would graduate and pass the test and give me referrals? Yes. We're not doing that in business. We're just telling people stuff and we assume they'll be in the right frame of mind. When I trained the Green Berets, I, I told them, here's the best question you could ask. If you're getting shot at or in business, something's going terribly awry. Instead of, why is this happening to me, which isn't going to help you. Right. The next best thing I can do now. What's the next best thing I can do now? Not why is it happening? It's happening. How do I get from here to where I need to be? And your brain will look for the answer you ask the question for. You say, why am I a loser? It'll tell you. You yes. say, how could I be a winner? It can tell you that too. That's EQ. I love that. Yep. We, we do a lot of work around that here at I Have Today, for sure. For sure. So important. Um, all right. So can, um, is there any final thing you want to share? I mean, you and I could talk all day. I'm so fascinated by this. But uh, is there any final tip or strategy you would like to share that someone could start? How to remember. How to remember. How to remember. This is great. Because people say, yeah, you read fast, but what about remembering it? So yes. what if I make you a memory genius in three minutes in our audience? That sounds amazing, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Ten things you won't be able to, and that by the time I'm done with this drill, you may make a few mistakes, but by the time I'm done, you'll have it down. Your brain will know how to do it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here it is. And everyone watching, do this too. This is not just a drill, it's a tool. And when we're done, I'm going to tell you how to use this tool in business and school. You want to remember pole, shoes, tricycle, car, glove, gun, dice, skate, cat, and bowling pins. Is it safe to say you don't know all 10 things right now? It's safe to say that, yes. It's also safe to say you can count to 10. Is that a fair statement? It is, yes. The Greeks discovered if you take a list you know, like counting to 10, and link it to things you want to learn, you learn them faster. So we're going to use those 10 numbers you know to learn 10 things I just listed. Are you ready? I'm ready. The important thing is when I say to say something, do it. You remember 10% of what you read, but 90% of what you say and do. So we're going to say and do together and our audience as well. Are you ready now? Ready. A one looks like a pole, a big, tall one, like a flagpole. Yes. When I say one, you say pole. One. Pole. Perfect. Two is shoes. How many shoes do you usually wear? Two. What's two? Shoes. One. Pole. Getting it. Three is a tricycle. How many wheels are on a tricycle? Three. What's three? Tricycle. Two. Shoes. One. Pole. Perfect. Four is a car. Four tires on a car. What's four? Car. Go to two. Shoes. One. Paul. Three. Tricycle. Getting smarter. You see how it's working? Very easy to do. I do this with three-year-olds. It's that easy. Five is a glove. How many fingers in a glove? Five. What's five? Glove. Three. Tricycle. One. Paul. Perfect. And we went backwards. Six is a gun, like a six shooter. I live in Texas. Cowboys, they like six shooters. What's six? 
Gun. Four. Car. Two. Shoes. Perfect. Seven's lucky in dice on the first throw. Seven. Dice. What's seven? Dice. Five. Give you a clue. Uh, glove. Three. Tricycle. One. Paul. Perfect. Rhymes work. Say eight skate. Eight skate. What's eight? Skate. Six. What do they love in Texas? Uh, gun. Four. Car. Two. Shoes. You're almost done. Nine. How many lives does a cat have? Nine. Nine is a? Cat. Seven is lucky in? Dice. Five is a? Glove. Three. Tricycle. One. Paul. Last one. Ten. How many bowling pins are in a lane? Ah, ten. What's ten? Bowling pins. Let's do the list together, everyone. One. Paul. Two. Shoes. Three. Tricycle. Four. Ca car. Five. Glove. Six. Gun. Seven. Lucky Dice. eight. Eight rhymes with? Skate. Nine is a? Cat. And ten? Bowling pins. It has it make you feel? Great. Great. Now here's great. how to use it. Here's how to use it. Numbers are so hard to remember, and we have so many of them in business and school. Imagine you're in a hotel, 314. Mm -hmm. Every night you're in a different room because you travel. Three is a tricycle, one is a pole, four is a car. Tricycle hits a pole on a car. Picture it. Tricycle hits a pole on a car. Yes. Tricycle, what number? Three. Hits a pole. One. On a car. Four. And now you know how to do it. And this could also be the value of pi in geometry, 3.14. Yes. If people want more information, go to Berg Learning, B-E-R-G, learning.com. We made a coupon, Forster, which is your last name, 10. They'll get 10% off. There's also free lessons. And if they don't learn it, they contact us, and I will make sure they learn it. I'm a Rotarian. If they can't learn it, I'll give them a refund. But I will make sure they learn it. And they should give this to their kids to finish school with good grades and get jobs and use it in business to make more money and give it to their parents to stay mentally fit. Everyone gets a benefit. That is so fantastic. Thank you, Howard. Now, uh, let me repeat that. It's Berg Learning, we're gonna ha dot com. And there is a coupon for 10% off. Thank you very much for that. And the code is Forster, F-O-R-S-T-E-R, 10, one, zero. Like, he just ran through the numbers, okay? No space. So be, sure to, be sure to get this. Like, you, this is what a great gift and investment for yourself. I know for sure I am going to do it and uh, I'm going to get it for my children as well. So um, well, I'm going to give it to you as a gift oh, just, uh, oh. because I want you to experience the benefit so you can share that with other people. Uh, I'm a grandparent and I read the paper and I'm very concerned about the future of our world and what our kids have to face. I can't fix every problem. I had a young man, graduate UT 16 with a 4.0 economics degree, master's in math at 19 with a 397. He's a professor at Yale in his early 20s. Another one passed the bar at 19. Another one became an English professor at 22. He was a C student. I think there's a responsibility when you can make a difference and help people to do it. I want businesses to solve problems. We all have, there's a lot of people think competition is the key. No. What made us succeed was cooperation. Yes. One person couldn't get a mastodon. A tribe could. <clears throat> and so if we give everyone these tools, they get good at what they do. They find more solutions. They find ways to solve some of the problems that we all face together in the world. And that's why I travel all over the world doing this, to try to give people a better world through mm -hmm. learning, not blowing them up, but through learning. I love it. Howard, you're, you're, you're an earth angel and you're doing amazing work and it's been an honor and a privilege to have you here at I Have Today. Everybody, don't forget berglearning.com. Go and get your, uh, yours for, uh, at the, and use the coupon code Forster10 
and start this journey today. You've been an amazing guest. I love what you're doing. And all right, a reminder for everybody that our theme was the benefits of learning to speed read. Howard just took you through and taught you some amazing strategies. And can you already see the benefit that that's going to have on your life, the positive, powerful impact, all right? And your intention statement was, I have today to leverage my learning process and knowledge. So that's it for this week's episode of I Have Today. I'm Diane Forster. You want to find out more information about me, go to dianeforster.com. And uh, we've got all sorts of free resources there for you as well. We'll have the links to all of this, uh, Howard's um Howard's uh, website and, and highlights of the show on my website under the blog page. And if you're listening to this instead of watching this, um, all of that will be there as well on the website. And if you'd like, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at I Have Today with Diane Forster and also at iTunes, I Have Today with Diane Forster. That's it for this week's episode. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.